What's going on MTG fans? Welcome back to Pistol Pete's Collectible Trading Cards. Hope you're all having an awesome new year, 2022. Um, definitely, I don't know about you all, but I'm hoping 2022 is a lot better than 2020 and 2021. Um, anyways, I wanted to start things off with a on a pretty exciting note here. The last time we did videos was back in the fall for Modern Horizons 2. We got up to cracking about 15 collector booster boxes. And then unfortunately we had to uh, relocate, so Pistol Pete's Collectible Trading Cards has now moved from Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C., up to New York, western New York. And we are enjoying the uh, frigid snow and cold of Buffalo right now. But anyways, we're back, we're back and live, and uh, you know, still shipping out orders on the regular, on the daily. And uh, it's time to get the YouTube channel up and running. So I'm going to do so with Portal 3 Kingdoms. I want to teach you guys a bit about what to look for if you're buying these old cards so you're not getting ripped off because there are a lot of fakes out there. Actually, just give me one second. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate not just, you know, what an authentic P3K card is, but I'll also show you little tricks on how to tell if uh, the cards you're buying are real or not and you're going to need a jeweler's loop hands down you're going to need a jeweler's loop to know whether or not the card is real or fake i do not think you can make it happen without it um you know and just to kind of give you a little example here um these are some proxy cards these are all proxies these aren't real um there's literally you know of each of these cards that you see here i've got duplicates of all of them probably a, a full uh play set four time of each four copies of each card of these ones here um but uh let's pull out the imperial seal this is a proxy imperial seal and there might even be a three visits i think there's a three visits in here somewhere um I know there's a three visits. It might be behind one of these cards in here. Yeah, it's probably in behind. So I'm not going to waste time with that. But let's pull out. This is the proxy. And I'm going to give you guys a little sample, show you exactly what to look for, and tell the difference between a proxy card and a real card. Um, if, you're, if you're an avid uh, Portal 3 Kingdoms collector, this is important to you. And this doesn't just apply for Portal 3 Kingdoms, all right? This applies for every card across the board, literally. So I'm gonna set that down right here. Um, and I will pull out an authentic Imperial Seal. This we actually cracked live stream, or not live stream, sorry, but it was recorded. Um, and it was on our earlier YouTube videos for PNZ cards. We've since changed the names to Pistol Pete's, DBA, PP Gaming. But um, nonetheless, this is an authentic fa factory fresh, probably, a PSA 10 BGS 9.5 or 10 gem mint um, Imperial seal here uh, you'll see we've got a full set we've got a few full sets actually but uh, at, at PP gaming but anyways let's get into it here without any further ado so first things first telling if your card is real or authentic one of my favorite tests arguably the best test is the light test if you take that light from your jewelers loop and you shine it on the back of the card, you should be able to read the Magic the Gathering logo, the blue logo from the back of the card through. And as you can see here, you can't see a darn thing. The light doesn't even shine through the card. I'm trying to get the angles right so you can really see it. But the light does not even shine through the card. Whereas, and I don't want to take this out of the binder because I try to keep my gem mints gem mint. I don't know if it's going to work. I might have to take it out. Yeah, I'll have to take it out. All right. But... This is just, you know, you guys, is for, all, for the benefit of YouTube and MTG fans out there everywhere, very carefully take this guy out of there, and I'll show you. Let's see if I can get it on the angle right. I don't want to, like, scratch the card or anything. You know what, I think, actually, I'm realizing now, because of the lighting I have on, that it might not show. Let me see if I can turn that off. And let's see it now. So there you go. You can see the light coming through the card. You can see the letter there in the back, the blue letter. You see that? You can see the letters through the back of the card. So that is an authentic. And that wasn't a far drop. I know you're all going to rip me to pieces. That was two inches. 
So I'm gonna carefully stick that one back in there because the rest that I wanna show you about how to tell it, whether it's real or fake, we can do with it in the, in the cover. Now this one, you'll see again, just to further reiterate, there's a little bit of light coming through there, a little bit, but you cannot read the Magic the Gathering, the magic in the blue there. You cannot see that through the back of the card. So that's your telltale there that that's a fake, that's a proxy. You know that without a doubt. One of the other things you can do is the weight test. Um, let me grab my scale. So here we are, here's the scale. And every authentic card, and I'm gonna pull out just a, a famine here to avoid touching that. Um, and you see if there's a 4M here, that means I've got four perfectly mint copies of that card there. Um, anyways, they're all going to come in about 1.76, 1.76 to 1.8. I'm going to re-tear that. Let me get that going here. Re-teared, back to zero. And there you are. It's going to be about 1.76 to a 1.8. Every single authentic card is going to be in that range. Inauthentic cards, fakes, proxies, double back, generally are more heavy, the double backed ones which you see for older sets, 9093, 9094, the Alpha and the Beta, um, they're gonna be heavier. Whereas these really good proxies that are so close to, like you couldn't tell unless you had your jeweler's loop uh, for your light and your magnification, but these really good proxies are actually coming in way low. You can see that's like 20, 25 uh, points below the authentic version. So those are a couple of key things to look out for, your weight, and your light penetration. Now, there is an even, the best test, in my opinion, my most favorite test for telling whether a card is real or fake is actually the yellow dot test, or sorry, the green dot test on the back of the card. And I'm gonna try my best here to see if I can't show you it on camera. You'll see here that in your green, let me see if I can get a little closer. Where's that camera, there we go. So in the green circle, there's the white, ah, oh, it's really hard to get that focused, but you, you see that white part of the green circle in the bubble there? When you put your jeweler's loop to it, and you should get a 30 time, or a 40, 40 time by 25 millimeter, just like this one here, you can see these uh, very fine features a lot better. Don't go with the 30 time, it's a lot harder to see these things. Um, so get yourself a 40 time jeweler's loop. Now, in that green circle, there's that little white portion, and in there, there will be four red dots in the shape of an L. And the L is going to be shaped, well, I can't, I guess like this. I can't really twist my hand to show you. But the L is going to be sideways. It's going to go ch -ch across the top. If the card is perfectly flat like this, the L should be like that. And there's going to be one, two, three, four red dots. Sometimes they can be quite faded, sometimes, um, but you'll see them, or you'll at least see definitively like three in that kind of line that you, that you really ought to see. And once again, I'm gonna pull out a famine again here. I'm gonna see, I don't know that I can get this on camera, but I'm gonna try my darnest for y'all. Let's see here. I don't know if I can get that on camera. I'll see if I can upload a picture um, after the fact, after the video, to demonstrate those four red dots in there. We're getting close, just not close enough. So I apologize, y'all. I'm really trying here, but that that's just gonna not happen. Um, it's too hard to get that double focus there through the camera lens and then through the lens of the view, the uh, jeweler's loop. But that's what you want to look out for. Um, find those four red dots and you're golden. Every other test, if you find those four red print dots, um, you're get virtually guaranteed that the card is authentic. I'm gonna say 99.999%. I have not heard of or seen in my experience a proxy come through that uh, uh, failed the four dot, or sorry, a real card come through that failed the four test, four, dot, four red dot test, nor have I seen a proxy ever come through 
that has all four of those red dots. They're going to be, they might be th a three, but they're going to be in a triangle shape. There might be a couple in there. They might be all like kind of like the four of a dice, but they're not going to be the L shape, a distinctive L shape of the four red dots. So that's what you look out for. Again, the light test, shine the light through the back of the card, look for that blue writing. The dot test, the red dot test, and the black of the the back of the green circle and the weight test. Those are my most favored. I mean, the print test is good. Like you should be able to see the authentic Magic the Gathering um, <clears throat> print design, the the rose petal kind of design. However, these really good new proxies. The problem is, is they've got that too. A lot of them, and you can't quite see it on this one. And I'm sorry about that. I just can't. I'm not good at lining up the viewfinder here, the camera lens with the uh, jeweler's loop. But these cards, you can't see it here. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. The very good proxies do have that rose petal design. So you've got to be look out, looking out for that. That's not necessarily going to be indicative of a authentic card anymore. So without further ado, I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm just putting away the proxy here because it's that time of year. It's the new year. I want to take, uh, I want to crack one of these packs. I've actually got several more. I'm not going to tell you how much more, but I did at one point buy half a booster box. So, um, I'm making it kind of an annual thing. Crack one of these. Now, one other quick thing I want to run through with these booster packs. You're probably, because of their age, you're probably going to have the a similar kind of concern or issue to me when I first started trading in uh, Portal 3 Kingdoms, is that some of these packs, they'll come with a little nick up here in the top corners of any of the four corners of the pack, and, and they'll, they'll actually be cracked open just ever so slightly right there. And that's actually just because of aging. You see how there's like a discoloration here? It looks like a watermark on the corner almost. You can see that on a couple of them. Like there's, there's, this one is darn near perfect. This pack here, this should be a PSA 10 um, or a PSA 9.5. This one, you can see that little white. It's whiter than the dark. There's the dark color here, the dark red, and then the light red. You can see that, right? That little kind of water fading there uh, or what looks like water fading. It is not. It's just age. These are how many years old, right? These are 20, 25 years old packs. Um, and that just happens. The plastic uh, starts to deteriorate, I guess, and and you can get that where they'll crack apart. So just want to put you guys all on notice about that. Now, if you like collecting these packs because you want to, you know, stuff them with some fake, some whatever random cards, and then put it up in a wall mount or a wall frame, um, I'm going to show you a little trick here. And again, this is the same pack. I didn't just swap it. Um, but there's a little trick here that you can use to, to protect your vintage booster packs. And you can do this practically all around. Once you open it just a little bit here, if you've got a toothpick, and I mean like literally a toothpick or one of these kind of dental picks, you should be able to just kind of get that part open just a little bit. And then you can stick your uh, dental instrument right down in there gotta be very careful about it and then use the, the the rounded side of it to just kind of and and not to touch the cards or anything that are in there you can hold your finger there and you can just kind of run it along the pack seam like that and that boom you can hear it separating right so here's another we've got one side down actually I better fix that that sides a little rough gotta get down in there with the hook and then slide it along. There we go. So that side's open. And then we'll tuck it in underneath the card. Careful not to touch them. And slide it along the other side. Boom. Open. And there we go. There's a, a first Portal Three Kingdoms pack opening in the last probably two years since I pulled that Imperial Seal. That was the last card I ever pulled from a P3K pack. And uh, here we go. Let's get into it without any further ado. Oh, by the way, I'm looking for about 12 cards to finish off my sets. I need a Zhao Zilong, the Tiger General, Balance of Power, Lu Su, the Wu Advisor, a Wu Spy, an Uncommon. I know I should have that by now, but I don't. Uh, Tzu Yu, the Chief Commander, Overwhelming Forces, Xiao Dun, the One-Eyed, Tsang He, the Way General, 
Lubu Master at Arms. I've got like 10 of those promo cards, the April ones, but I haven't got an authentic Lubu. Um, Zodiac Dragon, still need to get one of those. Riding the Dilu Horse, Slashing Tiger, Wolf Pack, and a Mountain 176. I've got like 20 cards of every land, but I haven't got that Mountain, the 176. So let's see if we're going to get lucky today. Anyways, going through the comments, and now also just as a reminder to tell the comments from the uncomments, it's very difficult in this symbol here, it, but it is going to be distinctively black for the common. It's easier to tell the common from the uncommon and the rare. The rare between the uncommon is difficult to tell. But anyways, we've got a trained jackal, and these look perfectly centered, perfectly centered. I see a little black dot here on the bottom of the car. Oh, it came right off. Um, but these look perfectly centered, so these are going to be PSA 10, so that's fantastic. Um, Wu Scout after the misfortunes gain. We Y Infantry or Way Infantry. Nice, a stone rain. That's a nice little hit right there, about forty or fifty dollars, um, in perfectly mint condition and perfectly centered. Again, I think that's going to be a PSA ten. It might be a little high on the top, a little low on the bottom. That uh, we'll give it a nine point five. Nice, a control the court uncommon. Now we're getting into the uncommons. And again, just to tell the difference there, let's put the symbol side by side. So you can see that the one on the right here, that's a little bit of a green, or blue, sorry. But it's very difficult to tell the difference unless you have the cards side by side. So, we're going from a stone rain to a control accord. Another nice little zinger, about 30 or 40, maybe up to 50 bucks. A Zodiac Ox, which is also a fantastic pull for those Zodiac creatures. A very high value uh, Zodiac animal. About 50 bucks as well. So we're already sitting at about probably 150 amongst those cards. And there's a winner. One of the, is it one of the cards I needed? No, it's not. It's not. But you got a duplicate of a fantastic card. Huang Song, Shu General is probably, especially in this darn near perfectly mint. I think that's actually very well centered. That's going to be a 9.5 or a 10. PSA, or not PS, it's probably going to be a 10, maybe a 9.5 PSA, but on BGS, that's going to be a 9.5 for sure, at the very least. So very happy about that. And then we got a swamp and a mountain. Is that the 176? Or, sorry, that's a 177. We just missed it. It wasn't the mountain that I needed, but these mountains are also worth a pretty penny. So, just to kind of recap, these are awesome pulls. These are, I'm, I'm actually absolutely delighted. The, the the Hong Song, perfectly graded and in perfect condition as a um, BGS 9.5 is probably going to be $500 to $1,000 once it's graded, um, if not more. You know, these cards are just constantly going up in value. And the Zodiac Ox, Control the Court, and Stone Rain, that's going to be another $100, $150. So, you know, if you're spending $400, $500 on a booster pack... You're going to break even on that, more likely than not. And I'm being generous on the pricing, but that's because there's also still some perfect condition uh, commons there, as well as these two lands, which, um, you know, mountains are like $20, 20 $20, $30, I believe. Um, so awesome. And again, if you get them graded, they're even worth even more. So I'm very happy with that booster pack opening. We got a very nice value uh, rare in that pack. Only eight cards, only eight cards, and these packs are, or sorry, is it 10 cards? 10 cards, and these packs are bloody expensive. But again, just an awesome, awesome pull right there. No complaints. We'll add that to the stack over here, or to the collection over here, and, uh, you know, be happy. So just to give you guys a quick little showing of the collection, anything with a 4M is four perfectly mint, booster pack fresh, perfectly mint uh, Portal 3 Kingdom card. And I've got a lot of them. Um, you'll actually see I've double backed them. I put about four of each card, um, you know, in a in a sleeve. So this one actually, you can see two white here. So there's actually three eightfold mazes there. And you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through each and every card, but uh, you know, I've got a very nice Portal Three Kingdoms collection. I'm very proud of it. Um, it's one of my pride and joys for my uh, MTG collections. And this is, by the way, this is just the personal collection. So whatever um, I get in excess of the cards that are in here. And where's that Huang going? Did I pass it already? 
HK. Oh, so it's right here. Uh, there's the other one that I have. See, so see two of them now. And these are all going to be like PSA 9.5 or 10s. Every card in this binder. Um, we do sell. If we, if I get a uh, higher than four mint copies, I do sell those. So you can find those on TCG Player. You can find those on eBay at one of our shops. Um, you know, prices are going up on those. I'm also paying a good penny on the booster pack, so I do need to get a return on the uh, investment. Um, so I'm not willing to sell my cards for less than they're listed. Um, but if you're after a darn near perfectly mint or near mint condition um, Portal Three Kingdoms card, check out our store. Anything like uh, lightly played, moderately played, heavily played, that gets listed instantly. Um, those do not get kept um at pp gaming so those all just go straight up online for sale um but yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope that you learned something from the video about how to tell your reels from your fakes and i hope you enjoyed looking at my set here of uh portal three kingdoms um so stay tuned for more. As you know, it was tradition at uh, the PP Gaming or Pistol Pete's Collectible Trading Cards YouTube channel that once a month I would run a free card giveaway up to $20. It would be a roll of the dice. Um, and uh, whatever the dice roll was, you would get that value in a card. And in order to participate, you do need to be a U.S. Uh, you need to be living in the United States because uh, shipping those to other countries to, you know, if you win a $5 card and it costs me $5 to ship, it just doesn't make much sense. So anyway, stay tuned for more of those free card giveaways now that I've settled down after relocating up to New York as uh, I will start to be giving those away in future videos. This one was just kind of a welcome back video. Um, glad to be back and on YouTube once again and working on this channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow and like this video. It helps us to get boosted in, uh, it helps the, the store to get boosted in its viewings and uh, to contribute more kind of knowledge and, and pack openings and share the experience of what you can get when you open different types of set boosters, collector boosters, and draft boosters. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Happy New Year. Have a safe and a good uh, month of January.